questions? Yes, but with microphones. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to? You can but I, I suggest that uh, I suggest that we make a round yes. around the ship. Uh, Jeffrey can uh, show you the equipment which is outside, and then uh, we can go to the uh, captain's bridge up there to, to, to meet him, and then we should go to the control room. This is where most interesting stuff is, and you can see it on monitors. And then later we can we can speak. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's air conditioned space inside. Okay. So let us make a quick tour of the ship. Uh, he'll he'll uh, show you around, and then let us meet. Uh, Inside. We'll start out here then. We'll start out with the. Uh, uh, you can see here this is the uh, ROV, remotely operated vehicle. Uh, it's tethered, as you can see, with a big reel there uh, to the vessel uh, from which we control it. We control its movements, we control the arms, the cameras, uh, the rotors here that move it. Uh, this is the main verification tool uh, that also can record. Uh, with the suction hoses and the arms, we can do limited excavation. Uh, with, uh, with different equipment we can attach to this, we can also do uh, a multi we can do uh, photogrammatic uh, overviews of the site to put together 3D models. Uh, we've also it's got a beaconing system so we can uh, then um, uh, do mapping and marking of specific objects. Uh, so it is the workhorse, it is the main, the main, uh, main tool for our underwater. So I would like to ask you, please, if, uh, so because we are here uh, at mm -hmm. this robot, Operation National TV, can you explain us about, can you stand please here, uh -huh. can you explain us about this technology? Well, in, in general, yeah, it's, it, it is a robot in, in that sense. Um, it's controlled by the, the data room, which we'll see later. So we have someone who has little joysticks that steer it around like a video game. We have another set of sticks that move these arms all around, so you can you can move the arms in different directions. Uh, it's got cameras like your eyes. It's got a sonar, so you can see ahead uh, and see things you can't normally see with uh, without the cameras. And, 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 and as I stated, this this is our main workforce. This is what goes underwater to do the recording, the sampling, the, the site identification. Uh, the excavation, all of our study is done through this. So in deeper waters, we don't have the divers. It's uh, you know, 100 meters, it's a little difficult, expensive and dangerous to put divers on sites. This can stay down for hour after hour after hour getting the job done. And how big is the area I'm going to explore here? Uh, right now we've explored an area that I believe is, uh, well, it's from uh, nearly the Montenegro border up through here. So, uh, where are we looking at there? Around 20, uh, 20 some odd kilometers of uh, shoreline out to the Nukumiri contour. So, yeah. So, you came from Montenegro? Uh, no, the, well, we, we do. We do it in reverse order in the Adriatic. We do our, our multi beam uh, mapping section first, mm -hmm. and we do Albania, Montenegro, and then Croatia, and then we reverse it when we begin to use the ROV verification and we go in the opposite yeah, direction. How deep will it go to the sea uh, with these cameras? Well, for the Adriatic, it'll go plenty deep. Uh, and, it, and it will is designed to go to a thousand meters. Uh, we haven't had an opportunity to do that. In fact, we don't have a thousand meters of people to do that. But uh, if you know, the vehicle could do that. And uh, what are you searching for specifically? Well, here is part of all of our plans uh, that when we work with the uh, Ministry of Culture, with the university, whoever. The object is to first set a baseline map so that the officials in the Ministry of Culture can then plan to protect a submerged cultural heritage. First thing you have to do is know where everything is and what it is. From that point, not only to protect it, you need to get to research it, study it, the students that have an opportunity to work with materials. So this is one of the stage one and stage two of that effort to help countries protect their cultural heritage. I would like to write down your name. Uh, Jeffrey um, as you can see, this is the bridge, um, apart from the normal operations of the ship, you know, like main engines and all that. Uh, what Hercules have different from other ships is the DP system um, and several other equipment that go with it. Um, once 
normally the work goes, we start with the survey first, like we did here the first few days we were doing the survey. Um, after that we analyze the data and Jeff and George um, pick up the targets that we need to check. And from there we decide which target we're going to. We go set up on the target. When we stop on the target we can use the DP system to keep position. So DP is dynamic positioning. It's got, we've got two thrusters that you can see on the monitor there. Uh, we've got a thruster on the bow and thruster on the stern. And with those we can keep position wherever we want. Uh, within one meter, two meters. So we stop in position and then we can launch the ROV. Uh, <coughs> then the ROV is with the cameras and all that, as just showed you before, so that we can see exactly what the targets are. So that's the VP system, which is uh, quite useful, of course, for the situations. Um, we've got also the two thrusters. We can use them in a man manual situation, like when we're docking the boat, which is also uh, very handy. Um, another thing that goes with the ROV, which we control from here, is the high pep system. Um, as you can see back there, there's uh, like the white pole. It's got a pole in it and it goes about three and a half meters in the water when we're stopped in position. It's got a transducer on the end and on the ROV and TMS we can put beacons. And this is what we use to uh, make communication with the ROV and TMS. So we can see exactly how deep they are and where, where they are in relation with the with Hercules. So, that's, that is then transferred downstairs and they can see it from the left. So we can see where we are also in relation to the target. Um, apart from that, we have the, this GPS system. It's a lot more accurate than a normal GPS because of the survey mainly. Um, the accuracy at the moment here is 0.8 of a meter. So it's very accurate com compared with other GPS systems. So that's also very um, a very good system that we have that you don't find in all boats, you know. Um, apart from that, it's general equipment that we use, um, the normal that you have on board, radars, echo sounder, GPS, that kind of uh, is, this, is this the usual uh, technology uh, in boats? In, in well, it depends. For research vessels, nowadays, um, there, a lot of people are applying the system because it's a lot more, it's better. Like, I know some boys that work with anchors. They try to do with two anchors um, to come near the position and then launch the ROV, but if you if you get it wrong by even five meters and the ROV doesn't reach, you have to pick up the anchors again. It's a longer process. For this process, when we arrive in position, it just takes us maybe 15, 20 minutes to set up because it's built a model and we're ready to go. And when even when we're in position, another useful thing is we can literally move where we want. If we want to do, move even 50 meters on a bearing of 0, 3, 9, we can literally go on that exact direction and as many meters as we want. How many people are in the crew? Um, it varies. We have four full-time crew all year round. Myself, the chief engineer, the bosun and the chef, which is also the chief painter. Um, so during the winter he takes care of the paint of the boat. And then during the survey we're about a total of eight or ten crew. During the ROV, we're normally full boat, like we are now about uh, 13 people, 13 crew members. Thank you very much. Any other questions? So, how long have you been working with this robot? Uh, with this boat, this is my fifth year now. So, yeah, it's my fifth yeah. season. Yeah. With this one, with this? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, this is, um, it's also coming to its fifth year, eh? the ROV. Yeah, because mm -hmm. when I started, we changed the ROV before we had um, a smaller one. So, yeah, it's about five years now, that ROV. And uh, how many countries have you explored? Uh, we've been to Sicily, Albania, Montenegro, here in Croatia, we've been to Italy, Calabria, uh, Malta, we did a few projects, and Turkey. we're going to oh, Turkey, Cyprus, before I was here, um, and we're going to Tunisia this year as well. Where in Croatia have you been so far? Only here. Only. This, this is our first year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, Drago nam je. Pa se primila Ja bila drvena, 
Znači nije riječ o brodovima, nije riječ o brodovima znači, brodu kod rata, nego je to nešto starije. Na jednom brodovomu smo našli uh, neke uh, znači, keramičke predmete tako dalje, međutim nismo ih izvlačili, uh, ali ćemo to napraviti. Znači izvadit ćemo par primjeraka da možemo točno datirati taj brodovom, ali za sad nam se čini da bi mogao biti 17. 18. stoljeće, po ovome što smo vidjeli preko kamere. Ali e, ovaj drugi brodovom e, koji je bliže Molontu e, ima na sebi e, dva sidra i moguće još jedno veliko željezno sidro koji je sidra od dva metra i tako dalje i izgleda po to ono zajedno sa tim sidrima na palu. I dva predmeta koje su prilično dugačka oko preko dva metra, znači izdužena za koje smatramo za sad da bi mogli biti topovi. I sad, na osnovu svega toga što se moglo vidjeti kroz video kameru, je morat shvatiti da je bilo dosta mutna voda i teško baš precizno vidjeti. Nama se čini da bi, da bi taj drugi brod mogao potjecati iz početka 19. stoljeća, iz čuvenih napoleonskih ratova, odnosno iz ove pomorske bitke između Napoleonove flote i Ruske i Crnogorske flote koje se tu dogodilo oko momenta. Za jedan takav brod se već zna, on je, on je istražen 50. godina i neki nalazi, odnosno topovi se nalaze u Pomorskom muzeju u Dubrovniku, da je jedan brod koji je potom u Donjoj vali u momentu, ali ovaj jedan znači koji je izvan. Tako da je po, po svemu sudeći i po onome što sad vidimo, moguće da je taj iz te poznate bitke taj brod. I ne bi bilo čudno da se e, kroz ovo naše istraživanje oko momenta zapravo pojave još takvih brodova znači koji su stradale, navodno da su bile velike žrtve na obje strane i francuske i crnogorske, odnosno ruske strane e, u, u, u toj velikoj bici koja se odvila 1806. Tako da to je jedna stvar u vezi e, e, napolonskih ratova, međutim e, moguće je da od ovih ostalih e, lokacija imamo jednu podmornicu vjerojatno iz Rusijskog rata, tako nam se čini sad na ovom obrisima koje imamo, ali isto tako je moguće da ćemo pronaći još i rimskih brodova, ali eto o tom tijekom tjedna do petka ćemo znati. Da, da se možemo nazvati da to znamo što je rano, tako da je rano. Možete zvat, što se meni tiče, svaki dan. Poslije podne imate moj broj telefona, ja ću vam rado ispričati što je bilo novo. Mogu vam poslati i fotografije ako hoćete, isto na mail. Znači mi ćemo svaki dan ispoljavati van i pregledavati ako nam vrijeme dopusti dvije, tri, četiri maksimalno lokacije dnevno. Uglavnom tih deset pozicija moramo ovaj tjedan pregledati. I sad što više tih pozicija se ispostave da su neki zanimljivi nalazi. Evo, ja se nadam da će jedan od tih biti velika senzacija. Ja se mogu ja se zamoliti gore na palogu da... Samo još jedno pitanje, taj prvi brodovan, da je bio pošto ste lokaciju drugog, Ovaj je, oba dva su zapravo, ovaj prvi je bio na polovici puta između Mouta i Caftata, ovaj je malo bliže prema Caftata. Sad nažalost da tu nemamo onu kartu da se vidi, ali, ali čao, znači to je to kad, kad se približi, znači tako prilike izgleda taj potopljeni brod. Da, evo, to vam je to područje, to vam je to područje koje mi pregledavamo. Da, da, da. Znači, Aha, to je područje koje... Da, vidite, to su te bijele točke, su ove točke koje nas zanimaju, to su nove. I tako da ćemo na, na tako, krajnji jug, jer ovaj dio još nismo pregledali. Mi se nadamo da ćemo sljedeće godine pregledati onda i, i veći dio toga.